Hey guys, Shane here with Cornhusker Catfishing. I just wanted to take a few minutes to just go over the rig that I've been using for Flathead. I just tried it out last time I was out and I, I caught a nice fish, which I'll put a picture of right now. My goal with this rig is my issue with Flathead Catfishing and honestly why I don't like it as much as Blue Catfishing is because you have to fish close to cover for Flathead and they always seem to get wrapped up. I snag a lot, I lose bait a lot. Um, so I wanted to come up with something that's going to float and hold the bait up off the bottom but also weight it down so the bait's not free to swim wherever it want and wants and get into cover and get snagged. So here's what I came up with and like I said it's working so far. So I'm going to start with a three-way swivel and I'm going to cut off some, this is eight pound test, just smooth casting trialing. Um, I'm going to make this two to three feet long. Now the reason this is going on such lightweight line is so if the sinker does get snagged up, it'll just snap off and you get the rest of your rig and you just tie on another sinker. So I'm going to tie on to the three-way swivel and it doesn't really matter what not use because this is designed to just break off easier. Just be strong enough to hold the weight when you cast. And same thing on the knot onto the sinker too. Okay sinker so I'm about two and a half three feet away from the three-way swivel. I'm gonna set that aside for a second. Next thing I'm gonna do so I keep my leader line on a broken spool from a reel. It's compact and easy to hold. Uh, this is 30 yeah 30 pound whisker seeker line. I love whisker seeker by the way it seems to be the smoothest casting strength has been great. Um, and I haven't had, it's very abrasion resistant as well. I've had no issues with it and I've been using it all season. Um, I'm gonna snell the hook on it real quick. You can look at my previous video just to see the quick way I used to snell knots. Six times around, then back through the way it came in, off the back of the shank, pull it tight. And there, snow. And that's an A dot circle hook octopus from uh, Team Catfish. For this, I only want about eight to ten inches of line because I want the hook to stay close to the three way rig so I know about where I'm placing it. So now I'm going to tie this onto the three way rig with the weight. Just making sure I have about eight to 10 inches of line there. Now for this knot, I'm just going to trailing knot. Pull it tight, pinch it down. Just clean it up a little bit. There. So, so far, we have eight out circle hook to a three way. That's a three ounce, uh, four ounce sinker to a three way. Um, I'll go a little bit heavier if I'm fishing in a chop because the bluegill will walk the bait along a little bit if it's picking it up. Um, so if it was a little windier, I'd probably go five ounce. So now I'm gonna set that aside for a second and I'm gonna go to my main rig that goes off the pole I'm using. First thing I'm gonna do is put a bobber stop doesn't matter how long you put it up the line right now you'll adjust it on depth based on where you're fishing so what I did when it was all tied up I just dropped it off the side of the boat and made sure the bobber stop was about a foot higher than the water level so that way if there is a little bit of chop it's not lifting the whole rig up um, but you're making sure everything's halfway tight there between the float I'm using and the sinker at the bottom 
So slide the bobber stop on. Tighten it so it holds, holds steady. Now so far, everything with the rig looks pretty normal, but this is where it gets a little bit different. Uh, my wife went out and bought some quarter inch tubing for me for this idea. I'm gonna put this, well, actually first, I'm gonna put a bead on the line. Now what's important with this bead is that it's still gonna stop this quarter inch tubing, but it'll also stop on the bobber stop that I've set up. So I'm gonna slide the bead on. Then the quarter inch tubing. And then I'd probably do another bead here, but I haven't had an issue with the quarter inch tubing getting stuck on a knot or a swivel yet. So I'm still just not using a second bead for the time being. Now this is where that open end on the three-way swivel goes. So I'll tie this on with the same trialing knot. So here's what we have so far. We have about two and a half, three feet to sinker. We have eight inches, eight to 10 inches going to circle hook, bobber stop, bead, and then about two inches a quarter inch tubing. Now, when I get out on the water and I'm getting ready to cast my bait out, I'm gonna get a balloon. We just bought a pack for a buck at Walmart. They're just medium sized balloons. blow this up, it doesn't really matter how big, we'll tie it off, hopefully. Now I'll tie this balloon off onto this quarter inch tubing. I haven't mastered this yet. Make sure you keep the line out of it. There. So that, that balloon will slide freely now. So now, when I'm checking depth, I'm dropping this over the side of the boat. I'll drop it down. I'll adjust the, the stop to how deep it is. This will be about a foot above the water. Now you're gonna have to anchor up in a similar depth to where you're gonna be fishing at. Otherwise, you'll probably have to cast and reel in a few times just to make sure everything's set right. But when you cast out, you're gonna have balloon up at the top of the water. The reason I like a balloon versus a slip sinker is I've noticed my bluegill, they can still swim around pretty well with a slip sinker at the top. The balloon will hold it tight up at the top and then the sinker, as long as that's strong enough or heavy enough to keep the fish pinned down at the bottom, this is all the wiggle room he's gonna get. So I can cast within four or five feet of heavy cover and know that I'm not gonna get snagged up. Also on the fish that I caught, it was pretty cool because when it took off, balloon starts going underwater, taking off, it looked like a Jaws movie. So that was pretty cool. But one downside I noticed with this rig is you are not gonna be able to cast this a mile. Um, it does, the balloon just has so much drag, it's gonna keep it from casting real far. But when you're fishing heavy cover, you're tucking in probably 15, 20 feet away from it anyways, and that cast is easy. Thanks guys, if you like this video, click subscribe down below. I plan on having more rigs and tips down in the near future. I also plan on taking you guys out fishing with me here soon.